Hey, my name is Maz. I'm 22 years old and I'm from Wisconsin and I make videos at the intersection of gaming and technology on YouTube. Yeah, these days I'm making um, a lot of tutorials that I feel like would be searched for by aspiring content creators, things like how to record your screen, how to get more FPS for when you are recording your screen because um, FPS fluctuates when you're recording your screen or, you know, running high demanding softwares um, at the same time. So you have good quality for your videos, things like how to become better streamers, how to become better content creators, how to just be more confident in your videos and things like that. I'm trying to cover like the entire spectrum of things that I feel like aspiring content creators would be searching for at the time in, in ways to like hopefully improve their own content. So that's kind of like what you'll find on my channel. It's just like a variety of like tech tutorials, but then also like advice commentary videos as well. I got started with making YouTube videos a long time ago, like I was a kid, but um, I started like making YouTube videos. I think I was making like comedy videos or something because I was watching a lot of like Smosh and Fred at the time. You have to know who those are, right? Like the OG YouTubers? Of course. Um, pe people these days don't know, but like I remember when Fred hit like the Millie, good times. But yeah, so I started with that. That didn't really work out too well. I was kind of like getting like maybe 12 views a video and all of it was just me refreshing, seeing like, oh, I wonder if someone else watched the video or not, you know? Um, and then after that, took a break for a while and then I started making gaming videos because that's kind of like what I started doing in my free time. I was just like playing a lot of COD and things like that. But I was also noticing like people like FaZe Rain and all these other like Call of Duty YouTubers are like blowing up doing the exact same thing that I'm doing. So I was like, all right, if they can do it, there's a pretty good chance that I can do it too, right? Uh, did not pan out that way, but you know, I made a little progress. Um, and then from there, I took a break and then I tried gaming again when like Grand Theft Auto came out. Um, that worked out a decent amount actually. That, but that's like when I found out that like I really enjoyed making tutorial content, like teaching people how to do something in a game that I'm decent at, right? Because I knew people were searching for it. And that's like what finally clicked is like making content that actually has like a demand for it, I guess, if you would say, right? Like things that people are actually searching for because that's going to like get views over time. Um, so I took a break again because that didn't really pan out the best, but I did learn from it. Um, and then... Um, I came back and I started making Minecraft gaming videos and uh, someone commented saying, hey, can you show me how you record your screen? Because I want to make Minecraft views as well. So I was like, yeah, sure. I'll lob up a tutorial really quick. I lobbed it up. That video got more views in like three days than all my videos did in like a, a month of making Minecraft videos. So I was like, all right, let me just make a couple more and see how it goes. And I did. And they all started doing way better. And I was like, all right, <laughs> I'm going to start making tutorials now. Um, and then I just started making videos on things that I thought people were searching for. Um, but I was only doing it if I myself had like the the same question, like, uh, how do I do this? I'd look it up and I'd see that the newest tutorial is like three years old. So then I'd be like, OK, there's opportunity here for me to make an updated version, because if I'm searching for it, there's no way other people aren't as well, you know? So that's what I started doing. And uh, it just kind of started rolling from there. And then after I grew a decent amount by making tutorial videos, I started making some advice videos saying, all right, so I've been on the platform for this many years and this is what I've noticed worked for me and what didn't work for me. And uh, it was just something to give back because there was no one to do the same thing for me when I was like first starting. So I was just like, all right, there's probably some people in the exact same position that I was in a couple years ago. Um, here's my way to like help them out. Yeah, so, well, I only started taking YouTube seriously like when I just started college. Like it was like my last like, try at it i was like all right you know i've seen so many youtubers just watching them uh go from like a thousand subs to a hundred thousand or millions or whatever right and i was like all right if i'm sitting around watching these people there's a hundred percent chance that i can make it if i really put like my all into it so i was like okay um last try right as i'm going off to college let me see if i can make it work because if i can't i'm never gonna have the time to like do it again because i'll be busy that's like at least what my uh thought process was so um, I just started going all in on it. I started like doing YouTube at the side of work, working an internship and also like going to college full time. Um, and then, you know, I wasn't really like making a crazy amount of money um, my first couple of years and I'm still not making like crazy amounts of money, but it's enough where like, you know, I don't think I need to be looking for a job or anything right now. Um, so but it's kind of like when my senior year started, when which is when most people start looking for jobs and things. Um, when I was like, okay, I think if I'm making this much right now, well, uh, you know, being a full-time college student and like a part-time YouTuber, if I go all in next year, there's a chance I might not have to get like a regular, you know, like a nine to five, like right away or anything like that. Um, as long as I like play my cards right and things like that. So that's what I did, but it wasn't really a thought of mine, like going full-time anytime throughout college or middle school or, or whatever, right. Or high school, sorry. Um, until literally like the senior year when I was like, okay, like I'm making decent money right now. 
um, and I'm only, you know, half uh, part time. Let me try going all in at least one year. I owe that to myself. Right. Um, I guess it kind of worked out with like quarantine and things going on. But like, um, yeah, so it wasn't really a thought like uh, a thought in my head until literally like the last year of college. So first I have to come up with the idea. Um, coming up with ideas these days isn't too bad because I can usually just uh, see from my audience like what they want to see from me next. So or I can like filter search through my comments and be like, uh, can you make a video on? And then I'll see, you know, comments from people saying, hey, Moz, can you make a video on X, Y, Z? So I'll go through some of those. I'll go through my discord and things like that. Or I'll already have like some video ideas written down or written out. Then um, if it's a tutorial, uh, if I depending on if I already know the thing or not, I might have to teach myself something and then write a script on it um, just so that I can like, you know, reference it later on. Or if it's just like a normal advice video, I'll just like bullet point some random things I want to talk about and go from there. But I always have some sort of like script written out and on one of my mo monitors while I'm like recording the video, just so that like while I am going off the, like the top of my head, I can still reference it to make sure I don't miss a point um, that I think would be important for the viewer to know. After I'm done recording, I'll like get rid of like the background noise of my audio, like a ceiling fan that might be on or like my computer fan if it's too loud or something like that. Um, I'll play around with the equalization, the compression, just to like make sure the audio is like crisp and like fun to listen to for the viewer, if that makes sense. Um, after that, I'll replace the audio in my video editing software and then I'll just go right away. I'll make all the cuts that I need to make. Um, and I'll get rid of all my mistakes, all of like the uh, times that I'm just saying they're not talking and things like that. Just so that like the video there itself is just ready to go. From there, I'll like maybe get some gameplay that I have saved from like when I was playing like a game literally from like last night or something. I'll throw that in and then from there, I'll just like play around with like when I want the video to be like me full screen or if when I want it to be like me like cropped into like the side or something. Because I feel like it's important to have different things going on in your video so that the viewer stays engaged the whole time. Because if it's just you talking the whole time, unless like, yeah, I don't know, you're insanely attractive or something, like I feel like people will get like bored. Um, so that's usually what I like to do. And I feel like the gaming stuff is just cool because it like kind of goes back to my roots of being like a gaming kind of creator. Um, so yeah, that's usually what I do. Um, then I'll watch it back twice. Um, first time is like, you know, when I make the initial cuts, the second time is like with all the crops and everything like that. And then like all the animations that I had, like lower thirds and whatnot. Um, and if everything's good to go, I'll render it. Um, and while it's rendering, I'll be working on a thumbnail. Um, and then by the time the render is done, I'm usually done with the thumbnail and then I'll upload it and I'll work on all the SEO stuff like on the spot usually. Um, I should be like, you know, getting ahead of it, but that's fine. I usually get it done like uh, on time and yeah. And then I'll schedule upload it um, and then for usually Sundays or Saturdays. And then, yeah, that's usually like my content creation process. I think they should know that live streaming itself is so powerful. Like while you're live um, and people are searching for whatever like your title or your description contains, your live stream has such a higher chance of just showing up at the top of the results like automatically. Um, it doesn't matter if you've been live for hours or whatever, like they just like to promote live streams themselves. So if you're making like a live stream about like a searchable topic, there's a good chance that you're just going to show up on the top while you're live. And then when you end your live stream, you'll be hidden again or whatever. Um, and then like the videos that already rank higher than you are going to be there. But while you're live, you'll be very like you'll be up top um, in the search results for whatever the topic is in your title or description or whatever. I feel like not a lot of people know that. And I feel like a lot of people just do a very awful job at like trying to make their live streams look appealing, um, especially like in, in gaming, like they'll just like throw up a random screenshot of their gameplay in their thumbnail when you can literally customize your thumbnail on YouTube for live streams, which is something that Twitch doesn't let you do. I think Mixer might, I'm not too sure. But like if Twitch allowed you to have custom thumbnails, I feel like so many viewers would get more views. So it's something that more people should be taking advantage of that are live streaming on YouTube for sure. But just YouTube live, man, people sleep on it. But I feel like it's inevitable that it's gonna like end up popping off. It, it's just gonna take maybe this year it will happen or something. Uh, like, I don't know if you've seen like mobile creators on YouTube are pulling like 600K while they're live. That's crazy, right? Like people on Twitch aren't even pulling 600K right now. Um, so yeah, I think YouTube Live is literally next up, but I don't know why people, so many people are sleeping on it. Like it's obvious, bro, like video on demand content is gonna be in the same exact place as live content. And once you're done streaming your live content, it can get suggested in the algorithm, recommended videos, things like that. You can mix up a playlist and get more residual views over time. There's just so much potential with live content on YouTube, but not a lot of people are using it. And I'm not too sure why, but I'm really excited to like see the growth of live itself like over the next year or so. Um, the first thing is always going to be just like the overall like presentability of their channel or like, the, I guess like the marketing, right? Like how their title looks and how their channel art, their logo, their channel name and their thumbnails. Cause those are going to be the first things I see before I even click on a video. 
So I just want to make sure that like, because first impressions, like they, they mean everything. It's going to be, it's going to be the term, the determining factor if I'm going to click a video or if I'm just going to go back to the search results or like YouTube or whatever. Right. Um, so I'll look at that right away and I'll give them whatever feedback I can. Like if they have too much text in their thumbnails, if they don't have enough color, no, enough vibrancy, if their titles are just too long and it's getting like, like the, I don't know, like the key part of the title is just getting cut off at the end and it's doing like the dot, dot, dot. Like I'll try to make as many notes as I can in like a short amount of time and then just send it back to them and be like, all right, here's what you can improve on. And this is why it's going to help you out. Um, and then usually uh, a lot of people hit me back up in like two months and have some sort of progress, right? Might not be like insane progress, but it's more than what they were doing before. And, you know, small progress is still progress at the end of the day. Um, so I don't know. I feel like it's like a cool way to give back. But that's usually what I look at like first. Then after that, I'll click on some videos, watch them for a bit. I can't, you know, watch like every person's like 10 minute video or something, but I'll watch it for a bit. And while I'm watching it, I'll, like I'll look through the description. I'll look at the tags and, you know, like the title, like I said before. And while I'm doing that, I'll also like try to listen to like how they're talking in their video. If they sound confident, if they sound monotone, things like that. And just like super small, like notes that I can make in the DM back to them saying like, all right, here's what you can improve on. And here's why it's going to help you out. You know, I think it just goes back to uh, what I said originally. Like, I wish someone else was able to do the same thing for me when I was on my come up. So it's just something I can do in my free time. Like when I'm eating dinner or something, I can just look at my DMs and reply to like five people. And that replying to those five people can pay off somehow, some way in the future, right? Like those five just might become like active viewers on my channel in general. Like the, let's say the first video they ever watched me was a video where I said, hey, DM me if you want to. And then me replying got them to become a, like a long time viewer, you know? It can have its own like um, payoff over time. Sure, there's a lot of people who might never watch me again or something. And that's completely okay too. But I'll feel good knowing that I, like I did my best to help them out, you know. Um, but yeah, it just goes back to what I said originally is like, I wish someone was there to do the same for me when I started. So let me get back uh, in when I can, right? Like literally, bro, between lobbies in games, like I'll look through my DMs and be like, hey, here's what you can do, blah, 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 right? Because it's so easy for me to do. And it's not going to take up a ton of my time. If it took up a ton of my time, of course, like I wouldn't be able to do it. But it doesn't like it's just a DM, right? I think you kind of learn something from every YouTuber you watch, regardless of who it is. So that's usually what I do now um, is like, I'll just be watching random YouTubers and see how they're editing their videos, how they're approaching their thumbnails, how uh, just things like that, like just the overall like way they like hold themselves up in their own videos. And I'll try to like take notes from it and try to like be more confident in my own videos or be more funny or be like more myself, I guess, because like, you know, in tutorials, like I have to be a bit more structured and like follow what I'm talking about, right? Like I can't just lob out random jokes or something because it'd just be weird. But like I'm trying to find ways to like be more myself in my videos, um, and especially like those structured ones. And I'm just taking notes from other YouTubers. Like, of course, I'm not copying them, but like I can go watch like Phase Rug, like a vlog channel completely different from mine and still learn so much on ways that I can like make my own videos more entertaining for random viewers finding me for the first time, you know? It's really just learning from other YouTubers that I'm watching in my own free time already. You really do learn at least one thing from every YouTuber you watch. It can literally be a YouTuber who just started and they might have like an amazing thumbnail and you can learn, oh, okay, I might wanna like implement this into my own thumbnails, whether it's like vibrant colors in like a corner or something, something random. Like there's always that one thing you can learn from someone, right? Um, and I feel like it's important to like have the open mind, like when you're watching any content creators, like of course, uh, consume the content, whether it's like a vlog or whatever, right? But also see like, maybe they did something cool in like the editing process that you can also implement into your own videos and things like that. I think you already know the answer, but um, it's Twitter and Discord. Those are like my, my go-tos right now. Cause I feel like those are like the most like real time um, interaction things out there right now like of course ig with dms and comments right but not as much as like twitter with like real-time replies to tweets um and then discord which is like a huge like you know what discord is like it's just literally the entire community all becoming friends with one another multiple different channels for whatever you're interested in and then everyone just talking joining v voice channels um just talking the normal general channel about whatever topic you want to talk about and uh, just that itself, like ha giving people a reason to pull up uh, is like, yo, you can meet other content creators here who have like similar goals and like aspirations as you do. So come on, join. If you don't like it, it's completely OK. But there's a pretty good chance that you will like it. And like, that's how it has been, right? Like people join every day and these people are still here like the next month and the next month talking uh, consistently in the general chat with people who have been watching me for a year or two years or so on and so forth, so forth, right? Like they're making friendships with these people. They're doing collaborations with them out of nowhere. They're just meeting and they're already working on videos together and things like that. So I feel like Discord right now is like the go-to for any YouTuber who really wants to 
uh, have like a closer bond with their community. And then like Twitter too, just cause like the real time interaction is like um, uncomparable to any other social media, you know? Um, there's a lot you can do. Cause like right now, um, the ideas that you can have are way more in comparison to like back then. But I think the best thing you can do is, all right, this is gonna sound like so cliche or whatever, but it's really, uh, don't like, it's not gonna be like a strict tip or anything. It's just gonna be like, here's my advice. Like, don't doubt yourself. Cause literally people are becoming, um, people are gaining millions of subscribers every every year right now. And they're just starting out. Um, so don't doubt yourself. Cause they're, even though it seems like it's super saturated right now, like everyone wants to become a YouTuber and people are signing up every single day. Just even though that's happening, every single day new youtubers are like basically blowing up so because of that like there's a really good chance that you can as well and then the second thing is just try because if you don't try you're never gonna know and i feel like that's the that's the main thing that a lot of people like they're nervous about when they first like make their youtube channels like they don't they don't know what they want to do or whatever right but it's really just like try every single thing out there's going to be eventually one thing that does a bit better than everything else did from there you can double down on that keep making content on that eventually one thing's going to do better again and just keep going from there but you just have to try like it's, it's the number one thing is like try a bunch of different things if you have to but eventually something's gonna have to work out like it's just inevitable if you keep trying and also keep learning at the same time uh watching like those advice videos on how what you can be doing better like seo wise or whatever um and actually implementing it into your videos and trying it differently every video you upload eventually one thing has to work out but the thing is a lot of people will give up before they can get that one video to work out because that one video to work out could literally be at any time right like it could be my next video that gives me 100k subs or something right or it could be your next video that blows up your guys youtube channel right but a lot of people they don't they don't realize that like the people who are big right now they didn't blow up out of nowhere right like it was gradual growth and then maybe they had blow ups over time but yeah like you just have to keep going because eventually that video is always going to come around you don't know which one it's going to be before you do it, but it's always going to come around. And that's just what I've noticed from every YouTuber that I've ever seen blow up or every just any social media account that I've ever seen blow up. There's always that one thing that pushed them a bit further, but you just never know what's gonna, when it's going to come. And bro, I know how corny of a tip this sounds like it's it's a very corny tip, but it's so true is like you you don't know, but you have to keep trying because eventually it's going to happen. You know, you right. just have to stay optimistic about it. I think there's there's three that I think are very important. It's a uh, click through rate, which is, uh, you know, when someone actually sees your thumbnail or like your video on their screen, how often do they click it? Like the little percentage. Um, the next one is your average view duration. So like uh, how long they actually went through your video. Then the next one is average view percentage. So out of the entire percent of your video, like how much did they watch it? I think those three themselves are like the most important things on YouTube uh, to be looking at in your analytics. Cause when you have those three like doing very well, your video is like bound to get suggested to random people because YouTube can see like when we put this video in front of other people, they're watching it long and they're also clicking it most of the time. Right. And just those two things itself will make YouTube want to recommend it to more people because at the end of the day, like their goal is to have people on the site longer and having those like stats like be up there is basically like speaking volumes on that, if that makes sense. Um, I think I want to get more consistent with streaming myself. It's something I preach often is like, yo, you should stream like it's a good thing to do, but I don't do it myself as much. Um, so it's something I want to become more consistent with for sure. And another thing is just like including my own personality a bit more in my videos. Um, Cause like, like I said before, like, you know, tutorials and things like they kind of like limit me from like how entertaining I'm able to make a video, like just for me myself. Cause like, imagine like watching a tutorial with someone who's like super energetic and stuff like, it's not what you want to see, right? But if I'm able to like find a way to fluidly incorporate who i am like personally like off camera and stuff like you know we've had talks before too um i feel like that'd be like super fun and engaging for the viewer to watch i just need to find the right way to do it and i feel like i've slowly been doing it over the past few months and a lot of people have noticed like these videos are way more entertaining than the ones from like you know last year right um and that's like the exact kind of feedback that i want to get so as long as i keep heading in that in that direction i feel like my videos are just going to keep getting more engaging and more entertaining you know so that's like what you can like look forward to see on my channel is like just that evolution itself. Thanks so much for uh, chatting with us today, man. It's been super um, insightful and I feel like I've learned a lot about YouTube and hopefully uh, this stuff can help out other small creators on the come up. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how it does end up helping other people out. And like, yo, for the people who are watching, like if you have any questions at all, drop them in the comments and I'll go out of my way to like reply to all the comments. He'll sure. do it. He'll do it. <laughs> He's good I'll on his word. Do He'll do it for sure. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, man. And uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime. All right. Awesome. Take care. Bye. Bye.